Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Producer Andy here wishing you a week of stuffing yourself and family gathering photos you may forget and regret. Uh, however, we do hope you might remember some of the most horrific holiday moments in your life and that you'd share them with us on our upcoming holiday horror story show. Please send your stories in by November 28th to don't make me come back there at gmail.com. As always, make sure to check out tickets to see Dustin Nickerson live in your town or just outside your town at DustinNickerson.com. And make sure also join our new fan created Dustin Nickerson comedy Facebook group uh, request to join is at the link in the show notes and today enjoy last year's holiday horror stories episode and we'll be back with you next week everybody welcome to don't make me come back there we are a funny podcast about family my name is dustin nickerson i'm a stand-up comedian and the host of the aforementioned podcast and directly across from me and here in our own home recording studio slash our own home daughter's bedroom slash our own rental home e- rental home by our home i mean the home <laughs> that we live in that it's home is where wherever i am with you wherever i am with you brandy carlisle or home is where i know it's that that other band the heart is or Home in the... Alabama, Arkansas. Oh, yeah, Arkansas. yeah, yeah, yeah. The point being is we're <laughs> in our daughter's bedroom. <laughs> if in our rental house. <laughs> we are sitting in bean bags directly adjacent to bunk beds. <laughs> Uh, there's also there's a, f- a pile of clothes on there's the floor. There's a pile of clothes. Some <laughs> of them mine. Yeah. It got mixed in here. Um, <laughs> there is a fireplace for some reason in this room because I think when it was built, it it's is going to be a den. It's It was going to be a den. It has access directly to the backyard. Add on. The kids' den. St- stockings hang from their yeah, bedroom. Well, you know, this is like one of our only homes that have had a fireplace. Yes. So you got to utilize it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And by utilize it, we mean house the Legos and Put then the stockings. stockings. On it. Yeah, exactly. So yes. that's where we are. Wherever you are, thanks for listening and uh, <laughs> being a part of the little podcast that could hear. We are very, very grateful uh, to have you. We have uh, our, our holiday horror stories continue today. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to talk three. about uh, a couple, a little just a uh, weekend uh, recap. I'm going to tell you about the fight that Melissa and I had just minutes before we got here <laughs> and a little bit about just holiday weeks in general. And then we'll bring it home with some HHSs. Holiday horror stories. Uh, that yes. being said, a uh, couple things, couple business items here. Okay. Uh, for those of you, <laughs> uh, I think, did we talk about this already that came out to the San Diego show? Did we talk about that? Um, I think so. Yeah. Well, that was the mm-hmm. last headlining show that I did, 12-12. Thank you, everyone who did come out to that. It was much appreciated. We had a good time mm-hmm. at the Laugh Factory uh, there. Uh, I believe I haven't been paid yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I'll take that up with uh, counting. Yeah, you know what? I really wish I wouldn't have brought that up right now because it's a little discouraged. Uh, you know what? Let's move on. <laughs> I was going to say, I think Stephen <laughs> pulled us out. Uh, Stephen, it's become a business meeting. Stephen, keep what you see fit in any of this. And it might be everything. If you decide to keep everything in here, maybe that's totally they will fine. hear this podcast. Yeah. And, you know, pay us. Oh, uh, yeah. And, or and you know, we get... <laughs> the you know the the power that this podcast has can really just bring that institution down to the ground too <laughs> so you know we got to be careful not to mix our words here ah. mince our words what's that expression i think it's mince mince like mince meats <laughs> yeah yeah what do you what do we what do we think the the meaning of that comes you know, from you know me and expressions can you tell me a <laughs> the meaning of mincing words or b the meaning yes, of christmas usually <laughs> you say let's not mince words let's not mince that's words. actually what our fight was about i oh well let, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here <laughs> but i do i do definitely want to talk about that but i also want to know what mincing words means what, what do we guess here it's um, it's not like minting like, words, right? No, That's, it's like... To mince words is to moderate one's language, to keep within the bounds of what is prudent or polite. Mince words are usually referred to in the negative. Do not mince your words. So when you don't... Yeah, okay, I get it. Like so, you overstep, right? Yeah, I get it. Um, MJ in the movie today, she said, are you being prudent? Mm. And I was like, would a teenager tell a 
ask a teenager if they were being prudent. Right. I mean, maybe if they were like going to NIT. I guess. Or were they going to NIT? MIT. MIT. Did I say NIT? NIT. That one I do know. That Um, one's just because I'm Googling stuff at the same time. Yeah, they are smart kids, so that's, that's the maybe whole idea. they have a better vocabulary maybe than, they do. than we do. But you know what? My vocabulary is good enough that people come to see me do stand-up comedy, talking to a mic. And you have a and couple opportunities to do that coming up. Go ahead, Mel. Nobody says, wow, Dustin, you have a great vocabulary. No, no, no. no. They, they say mess you're up. Funny. You know what's funny is <laughs> Taylor has a great new joke on the Netflix special that she just filmed mm-hmm. about couples and... Someone's like, I'm not going to give away the whole joke because it's coming out. But like, yeah. you know, like some people are like, are you the chocolate? Or are you the raisin? And it's very funny. And she's like, and then some people are like, aren't we chocolate covered chocolate? Like, what, you know, like those Lindor chocolates. And those are called Lindorf chocolates. Yeah. But she called them Lindor chocolates. And she did not realize that until after it had been filmed. <laughs> you know what? I kind of thought the F was silent. Really? Like a French word or something. Really? Yeah. Because oh. I thought that it was Lindor. Well, don't mince your words, in Melissa. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> I We're all learning something today. Mel- no, I actually am very confident that I've probably messed up about a l- 17 words since we started recording five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, <laughs> I don't have good I- internet access, I'm realizing right now, to check these oh, things. No. and uh And I also just don't really care to. So... You know, it's the week of Christmas. It is. If you're listening to this, you're you're on the you're hit you're hitting the road. Yeah. Um, you're out doing some last minute shopping. Yeah. Standing in a very busy line. You're sitting in your car crying. That too. Because you need a break. Yeah. From the in laws. Um, More like the outlaws. Am I right? You're drying your hair. <laughs> you're doing you're a doing lot the of dishes. stuff. And uh, also this coming Sunday. Mm-hmm. 26. We have our Patreon Zoom hang two days yep. after Christmas. Something says so going to tell me we we're going to be actually talking about one, but yeah, one day after Christmas. Don't mince words with me, <laughs> Melissa. Don't be prudent with don't me. Don't be prudent. So uh, we tell tell people about the, exactly the Patreon Zoom hang is and maybe what kind of hot mm-hmm. you know zinger yeah. icebreakers you Ooh. might have planned. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had a pretty good group in November, and we <laughs> we talked about um, our favorite Christmas songs, and um, there were some new patrons that came. Mm-hmm. We had a grand old time. We are going to hear about Dam Aris's dog, mm-hmm. who's been struggling with some dog anxiety. Great. So we're on the edge of our seats to hear the update. Dare I say um, it's causing me anxiety. <laughs> It might involve some like medicinal marijuana for a dog. I'm sorry. Come again. <laughs> it's like a joint for her dog. He like. Do the, you remember that? Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now we're I do. Gonna, we're gonna follow up. It does. He. I'm sorry. Do they have to <laughs> light it up? Like, does he take a drag <laughs> of? If you remember, Tiffany said that they should put him in a little um, reggae hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's too much. It's too much. So, so this we'll is find out. this is the kind of stuff that you can take. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's just a way that you can give a little more to Dustin Nickerson comedy, and uh, you know, and get a little more from Dustin Nickerson comedy. Uh, early access to videos, uh, discount uh, merch, uh, free stuff in the mail. You know, kind of access to different discussions and community stuff about upcoming projects, all those kind of things. Um, there's other stuff in there. A yearly cameo. You would have gotten a Christmas card, which I will tell you, as you'll see as we present it, is a pretty pretty great christmas card yep people are pretty mm-hmm. excited about it i got a lot of people texting me saying this is the best christmas card i've ever seen so it's nice yeah it's, it's you know we don't we don't mess around with christmas cards here in the nickerson house so so you know all you can just go check our patreon that's mm-hmm. what i'm saying and, mm-hmm. and that's all that kind of fun stuff waiting there for you so that being said uh it is the week of christmas if you do celebrate christmas even if you don't celebrate christmas it is still the week of christmas you know this is kind of it's an interesting thing right now how the holiday breaks because the kids have a full school week off before christmas right mm-hmm. like yeah that's that's pretty normal no, but I mean, it's um, like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's what I yeah. mean. Like it's a, with it following on a Saturday, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, they get two weeks for Christmas, but this whole week it's like Christmas break, but they don't know when Christmas is. And, mm-hmm. Um, but it's not like Christmas at all. Yeah. So, uh, I remember when you were here, sorry, I was all, doing the lyric. 
all the adults are and all the fun we had last year. Are you getting this reference or no? I, well, I I don't want to get off. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm off track as well. <laughs> you, Melissa said she didn't want to get off track as she peeled a string or a hair or a piece yeah. of lint from her uh-huh. her frumpy sweater. Yes. Yeah, which went from eight years ago being the librarian special mm-hmm. to now being the forefront yeah. of women's fashion. Grandma, which librarian Somebody sweaters. could say that of Melissa herself in the last eight years, went from being the librarian special to the <laughs> forefront of women's fashion. Melissa's had a glow up of herself in the last eight years. <laughs> yeah, I sent you that picture from Well, I started to make a little more money. Yeah. Being that, hey, at least every once in a while, our clothes don't have to be used. You, when we didn't, when we didn't, <laughs> I'll get this sentence out. When we didn't have to buy our shoes at thrift stores. Right, 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 right. We hadn't had a shoe box in this house. I do remember in very years. vividly when we had a shoe box. You're like, oh yeah, they have whole projects where your kids need these. <laughs> <laughs> now we have one. And that was really presumptuous of them to assume <laughs> that, that we, we would, would have, have a- these shoe boxes. <laughs> yeah. We're not bougie. <laughs> So ah. how do you feel this week, Melissa? Because, you know, if you were mm-hmm. to um, if you were to guess on how you felt based on how you acted in Panera after the movie, <laughs> you would think terrible. <laughs> but perhaps you could say that of me too. Yeah, well okay. When What's the, going on, Melissa? When one of the kids might have a cold, right. it can like make me spiral. Right. Emotionally. Right. So Joel had this big old tournament. He was sore yesterday, mm-hmm. like massaging his neck and stuff. And then right. today he was like, my throat hurts, but like, you know, he has bad allergies, you know. Mm-hmm. After Spider-Man, he was just like shutting down at dinner. And I was like, is this because you don't have your phone or are you sick? Yeah. Because, or are you just a moody teenager? <clears throat> yeah. I was Because I'm like, we're sending you to a Rams game in LA tomorrow with a carpool. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Six people. We'll discuss that phrase here shortly. You know, he. Joel's friend. Okay. It's just like this whole thing is the game was supposed to be Sunday. Now it's Tuesday. Let me back up a little bit for context. And I'm just like, oh no, he's going to get COVID for Christmas. We'll back up. Okay. There's a lot of. Christmas is canceled. Okay. (laughs) 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 That's where. That's, I can that's tend where to you, go. So Joel sneezed three times. In a restaurant. And Melissa canceled Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So full context here. Uh, <laughs> as you guys know, most likely, you know, there's been there's been a rise in COVID cases right now. There's been a lot of cancellations and stuff like that and in the entertainment world. And one of those things that happened was that a Seahawks game got delayed. The Seattle Seahawks were supposed to play the Rams, the Rams on mm-hmm. Sunday, Sunday mm-hmm. night football, but it got postponed two days. And so it's tomorrow or today, as you guys are listening and in that time, you know, a few things happened. One, uh, we like I got home and we were today we went out. It's like, OK, it's like the start of Christmas break. Right. With dad home. And we go out <laughs> and we go see Spider-Man and it's great. And, you know, we're all having a good time. But Joel kind of on the tail end starts showing pretty sick. He had a wrestling tournament on Saturday, Saturday. too. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things. It's like we're not being reckless. I mean, he's like vaccinated and we're trying to, you know, we're not causing like a scene and, you know, and like being again, like being reckless. But but he's also you know, not doing any preventative care. Like not, he, yeah. he hasn't taken his allergy meds. Yeah. And he, he also has hasn't to, had any cough drops. And he also has to ride or... for in a car for like five six hours with a different family tomorrow. And you're like Ugh. fourteen boys. If, and, yeah. And and in like it's it's like I know I said that once in a lifetime. Yeah. But it's like sideline box like they're season ticket holders. Right. So I'm are like- they box seats or the sideline? No, or, they're- so, I mean, all the seats are sideline. But... Okay, they're like, they have free catering built into the tickets. Oh, okay. So this is like a nice oh, yeah. ticket. And so then I'm like, well, if they should replace you if you can't go. Right, and, right, and right, you gotta, right. But he doesn't know better to be like, I'm starting to have some symptoms and I should right. probably do some things to prevent that yeah. or tell my friend I can't go so they can replace Or you. if I were him, do the, my best to hide these symptoms. <laughs> because <laughs> i want to well, go to this game exactly i mean like i said it's but you, you know, just did the at home covid test and he doesn't getting, have a fever yeah, he you know fever. he just needs to go to bed he needs to go to you bed know? yeah but the fight was because in panera bread <laughs> i said it was a once in a okay. lifetime there were 
experience. There were other things going on there. So we, the movie was for the most part, I mean, the movie is great. Spider Man. Spider Man was so good. It's phenomenal. We all loved One it. One of the better uh, Marvel movies ever, and it's great and it's fun. And you know, we're not going to give any spoilers, but you know, all of our kids it's loved fantastic. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, so good. Mm-hmm. And probably the best my kids have ever been in a movie. Which well, is the ins- fact that you sat with us was. I was also a miracle. I was so tempted to watch it without you guys. I almost chose you a seat online that was away from us. Honestly, I so that I w- you could actually enjoy. So that the I can experience. enjoy it because I I like I don't know. Let's discuss you. We I brought this up. Like it's hard for me to watch movies with people, or like movies that I'm excited to watch because I don't want to miss parts of this movie. Like a, you know, especially like movies that I'm really excited about. And yeah. to me, it's like the most common courtesy in the world. To be quiet and un- 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 unintrusive, uh, you know, and not bother someone annoying to other people. But I understand that I take that more seriously than others. I understand that your family talked during movies as you grew up, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and well, I'm sure you weren't as courteous as a child. But I mean, I don't perhaps know. Perhaps you were. Maybe it came from my movie theater days where every once in a while you would have to go shush somebody. Yeah. You know, well, and we hadn't been, Joel had been in a theater, but we, you had, but the girls and I hadn't yeah. been to theater in two years. And my kids are terrible movie watchers. Yeah. Like, they know I'm mm-hmm. like this, and they mm-hmm. just don't care. Well, and the theater is mostly empty. It's Monday afternoon at 3. Yeah, exactly. We caught a man. Um, and uh, Joel finishes, like, three-fourths of a soda and is, like, shaking because Joel. sugar hits him. Joel is, like, a lightweight. They talk about that with people drinking, you know, yeah. that they can have, like, a drink and get drunk. Like, Joel is that way with sugar. Like, mm-hmm. he, his sugar Especially hits him. Especially soda. Yeah. Yeah. It hits him so hard, so fast. <laughs> and he starts, like, shaking. Like, he's literally, like, like hyping in his chair. And he's like, can I get a refill? And I'm like, no. <laughs> You absolutely cannot. And I take what he has left, which is already his refill. He's asking for like a third refill. And he like kind of mouths off to me. And I was like, all right, well, you ask again. I just dump it out. And then uh, he takes some from Gloria without asking. Just because he's eating popcorn. Yeah, he's just yeah. just takes it without asking. And Gloria is like, dad, my, Joel just drank half my soda. And he's arguing with us. He's like, I didn't drink half. I took us drink. And we're like, you you're n- missing the point here. <laughs> We told you, you have self-control issues with soda, (laughs) and then we took it and you stole it. But again, that being said, that was kind of the only issue, but it was a bit of a remnant. And as we got in the car to go to Panera, because we had a gift card, thank you, Taylor Tomlinson, who got me a very big (laughs) gift card to Panera, because she knows I love Panera. That's a very thoughtful gift card. And Joel was- your comfort food on the road. Joel was just kind of moody and they were just asking for a lot of stuff. And then a homeless guy was yelling at the staff and got kicked out. So there was a lot of (laughs) stress, right? And then you were saying you were most upset that Joel was starting to like, I was upset with how he was like acting and you were upset with the fact that he was like showing some signs of sickness, right? Well, it's kind of, this is um, one of those like things that my mom was really into was if you say you're going to go to a party- then you're going. Right, right, right. And if you don't RSVP, you're not going. Right. <laughs> and oh, and so, so I've joked with her because I've hosted birthday parties where like 10 kids are invited, 10 RSVP, seven show. Right, right. And you're like, and they spent money on that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, it is a SoCal thing, but in this, the boys have been planning this together via group text so it's like four teenage boys and two dads you oh know? yeah joel, so like, joel failed to tell us that he, he needed was, his vax, he needed card, his vax or card, or card negative COVID yeah. test. so like they're learning independence and they're learning how to rsvp and and that's what got me i was like he's like can i lay my head down and i'm like well what's wrong you're gonna right drive to la and back tomorrow but the cause and effect of all this is is like kids don't think this clearly right through right, right right you know so that was what kind of set your brain me off. is on fire at that age yeah yeah so i'm like if you can't stay awake for dinner then how are you gonna go how are you gonna drive to like you said la and back tomorrow yeah and, and the answer is because and... it'll be for a football game with his friends and that's just more yeah, exciting he... than panera with your family exactly which his... i didn't which i disagree <laughs> i think panera with my family is more fight exciting than picking football with two friends. items be it soup salad oh, and, then he, and then he forgot <laughs> his mask as we walked in you're like well, come on 
just focus up just you know why why it, it just feels like sometimes like i just feel sometimes i feel like with like like an older teen you just it feels like you're just dragging this like sack of potatoes behind you <laughs> You yeah. know what I mean? It feels like weight that you're dragging. <laughs> like, come on. Just can you walk? Can you just move <laughs> at the same speed as us? Can you focus? Like when he was like, he when he said like, I didn't know I needed a mask. I go, Joel, you know that it's the rules in California again. I don't know if he does. Well, I know cause because I he's told been him, at school. No, I told him earlier that day it was. And then we told him as we were getting out, grab your mask. He's like, I didn't know. I was like, oh, you weren't listening. <sighs> yeah, I think... <sighs> I think they're the the teen stage. They're either like aloof right. and not present, right? Or they're like hyperly present and correcting everything you say, right? 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 And then right, you're right. like, well, I don't like this version either. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is true. Like he was like kind of like nitpicking us on like some of the stuff from the movie or like some of the comic books, and you're like, yeah, no, I'm not here for this. But it is a movie that you could definitely pull apart yeah i mean that being said so all of this boiled Mm -hmm. over as Mm -hmm. we were sitting at panera bread you might have misunderstood what i was saying essentially what we're trying to decide is if he should go tomorrow and i didn't know if you wanted him to go or not go yeah and then you said you want him to go because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity well we were on the same group text with one of these parents and right. this is like not just where they were in the nosebleeds like this is like their season ticket holders and so right it's right like but nice. anybody can hold season tickets. um no but yeah. my point is that joel hasn't been to an nfl game in 14 years right and so <laughs> this is a really it plus three of his friends like right. his wrestling friends like that's a really cool thing yes and i didn't want him to miss it that's fair that's fair. Going to a game with your friends, with the drive, like that, that's not going to happen a lot. Yeah. I just laughed at it because I said. It's a, it's an extreme statement. The once in is. a lifetime. Yeah. Because the Seahawks come to LA once a year. So it's more like a once in a year opportunity. Well, and this is his team. To which yeah. then you said, well, I'll call your bluff. You want to, you take a weekend off and take him once. You're we- you work every weekend. And I was like, okay, well now we're getting personal. <laughs> 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 because you were like lifetime and then i was like how many how many nfl games have you been and i to? said like eight or nine you know i know but i know what i meant was he he's 14 and he's never been to one so, right so this is his first so when, with his team yeah it's the first in his lifetime not this yeah, will be your but only chance focusing but with the friends on... and all that kind of stuff yes i get it right. anyways that fight lasted a while that was what we had that you know i don't know if you've parents have ever had this but when the kids like kind of politely ask you to stop fighting <laughs> i think i have some panera in my hair <laughs> uh, panera am i right <laughs> Oh, also, Melissa kind of like clunky like, Melissa kind of also like lipped off to the Panera employee no, who was I a high schooler not. because they didn't have bread. And no, Melissa's like, I "Well, I'm, I, you have bread right there. I can see the bread. Can we just get like a baguette or something?" <laughs> no, Claire likes <laughs> mac and cheese and the baguette. Melissa mouth Melissa scolded a seventeen-year-old girl to give <laughs> her a different not. type of bread. I did not. So she that said, her child would get the bread. side she want. Yes. And then, as we all said, it's Panera bread. Right. Um, you have it, but what she meant have, is they don't have the normal they don't side have the bread. Little mini baguettes for kids. Yeah. Or, and I was or like, anybody, they didn't have the side baguette. Yeah, that you like, normally can get. Could we sub that with a different bread? Right. And then I said, take that brioche <laughs> in the case. <laughs> <laughs> And so she finally <laughs> conceded, and then they didn't. And then they give didn't put it on the there. Bread. So then I had to come yeah. up and ask for the bread, and then she ate like two bites of it. Yeah, she barely ate any of it. And <laughs> after then, being like, "I really want that," no, bread. that same girl that you mouthed off to had to throw away a two bite <laughs> version of that brioche. Bro- brioche. <laughs> we were all a little I tense because I also up. mouthed off to the Panera employee <laughs> because they give the, our pager didn't go off and I was like this has been a while and I go up there and I was like is this for she's like for Dustin I was like yeah and I was like my pager didn't go off she's like oh I guess we gave you the wrong number I was like has this been up here for a minute because it had been a minute and she's like yeah I said your name but I guess she didn't hear me and I go yeah I moved to the different side of the restaurant because you guys were throwing out a homeless guy <laughs> 
Gloria just started eating her soup and I was like, isn't it hot? You probably need to stir yeah. it. She's like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it had been sitting up there for a while, unfortunately. That being said, you know what? I have a flea f- free flatbread coming because of my, <laughs> my Panera rewards. So we'll be back soon. All in all, uh, you know... <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say it was a good trip, but it wasn't. Um, oh, no, I thought it was. <laughs> the food was good. No, the food was Panera. It's always it was there a for Panera, you. It was a Panera experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really wouldn't have it any other way. You know, we... Mm. If I'm you're tra- not fighting in a Panera bread, Ironic, what are you doing? Coincidentally, <laughs> coincidentally, normally we go to Panera and we're like, okay, well, the kids will probably fight. And it was us this time. It was about the kids, and I still blame them for it. But... <laughs> I think we've covered this topic. We, we managed to go to two malls on the Monday before Christmas. Of course, there was some stress. Mm-hmm. Melissa, I am always worried about internet safety. Yeah, especially with our kids. Especially for you. I'm worried about what <laughs> you are looking at, which is why I want to get Bark put on your oh, phone. Oh, boy. Your phone, uh, <laughs> your laptop. Your huh. pager. I need to yeah. get. I need to get bark on Bluetooth. your pager. Yeah, Blue, on your Bluetooth. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the little one in your ear. <laughs> Apple CarPlay. Uh, as many of you guys know, uh, we are parents. As many of you know, you all know we are parents. Guys, we're parents. We're parents, and <laughs> yeah. uh, internet safety is. I don't know if there's a thing that parents think about more anymore. It I mean, is it so is, important. It is and the, so hard to keep track of. Yeah, and thankfully, insert Bark Technologies. And then a hero comes along with Bark Technologies <laughs> to monitor your kid's phone. And there's a new Bark phone, too. I didn't hit that. I missed that one. But before that, I was crushing that. That, that was, was good. pretty that good. Was good. Mm-hmm. Bark Technologies is a friend of the pod, and we love them so much. There's a couple services that we've used with them over the year. The phone, um, the monitoring of your kid's phone where they send you alerts and what they're looking at. And they have mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. levels and things. Things, whatever it may be, it's fantastic. You're not spying on your kid. There's just certain things where Bart goes, hey, you might want to see this, and they show Check it to you. Check out this tag. And even better, simplify your life, ladies and gentlemen. Bark has a new phone. That's right. And it doesn't look like a kid's phone. No, no, It's black. No, no. It's yeah, sleek. Yeah, yeah. Phone technology is improving, and this phone grows with your kid. Oh. So maybe, maybe your kiddo is, you know, kind of inching yeah. into, like, yeah. an Instagram account. Yeah. Or wants to be a YouTuber. Yeah. And you want to give him some training wheels to get there. We recently let our kid get on Instagram and Mm -hmm. it was because of Bark. That's right. We let our kid, because we're less concerned and because he's 15 and we're done parenting. But (laughs) so tell him, but we also, you know, we don't choose uh, any sponsor for the pod. We like sponsors that make sense and we use in our lives and Bark Mm -hmm. is one of them and the new Bark phone is something that we're really excited about as well as Bark technology is what we use constantly and we have some promo codes and we have some details hit them Melissa give them those sweet sweet details All right, so you can manage screen time you can block websites and apps Mm -hmm. you can monitor text email YouTube and 30 apps and platforms and he's excited Um, you can get child psychologist advice and tips Mm -hmm. even ways to approach kids when they Mm -hmm. um, mess up so how do they sign up and how do they save some money, Melissa? Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you click on the link in the show notes and enter don't make me, mm-hmm. all one word, don't make me, mm-hmm. you are going to get seven days of a free trial Boom. for the Bark Premium subscription. And? As well as 15%, 15% off for off the, the lifetime life. of your subscription, baby. That's right. Do, 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 I don't know why I went into the Star Wars theme there, but it's, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're just kind of in a mood right now. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Do, do, do. Okay, let's get into some holiday horror stories, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Mm, 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 oh, mm. are you going to talk about the taping or you already did a it little bit? It was great. Bit? Taylor crushed yeah. it. There you go. Mm-hmm. Out there in Boston. Mm-hmm. Your first time. And I think I'll go to Boston. Boston's small. Yeah. It's fine. It was cute. I liked it, but I was like, I get, I get why people leave here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just the downtown. It's very small. Yeah. I, actually, I don't think 
I don't even know. The Boston population is not very big. Like you kind of get there and you're like, okay, I, I, you know, again, like, like it's like a legendary. Con- yeah, it's six hundred eighty-four thousand. What would you compare it to? I mean, that's smaller than Seattle. That's crazy. Seattle's close yeah. to a million. San mm-hmm. Diego's a million. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. just it's it's interesting because it's a very iconic city. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, and so. See, when you think of because of its sports scenes, because it's kind of its impact on culture, yeah, you know, because of so many famous people that you know from Boston, because there's been movies and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and the accent is all kind of played up. It's a very <clears throat> influential city, yeah, but it's not big, like size wise. I mean, it's hard to even, I'm trying to even think, like, everything in that in the midwest is way bigger minneapolis chicago detroit it's new york is obviously way bigger so maybe it's like a it's kind of it's just it's, um, what were you like gonna a, say like yeah like a mid-sized city yeah it's yeah. like a portland mm-hmm. that's what it is i would compare it size wise to portland mm-hmm. i don't know what portland's population is i bet it's pretty similar 645 almost identical wow, you did Boom! it <laughs> Ah, holy crap you're the man for the job i have got a problem <laughs> that i just linked those two cities yeah yeah and they're on the water and they same thing they've got it's one of those cities that everybody knows and everybody talks about yeah and everybody's got something to say about boston oh, and portland boston. they're yeah. in they're the they're mm-hmm. you know they're they're the um they're just two sides of a coin those two cities yeah it's cute it's mm-hmm. lovely and we were like we were also staying in like a very like bougie area yeah so i was like i don't think this is like the actual <laughs> boston but mm-hmm. but it's also like warmer there than it was in san diego and i was so like weird. this can't be ideal but it was fun taylor crushed it and then we went to raleigh raleigh was super weird and i'll tell you all about that another time okay but we have some holiday horror stories to get into uh this one yes. right here is subject travel stories and this is from um jessica ready i'm ready Last summer, we took our four kids and my husband's 20-something-year-old brother on a road trip to Yellowstone National Park. Okay. Okay. We got up early and had the kids eat quick so we could hit the road. My four-year-old didn't have much of an appetite, so she had a banana. That seems ominous. (laughs) Seating arrangements were- Keep that in mind. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. My husband and I in the front, uh, the four-year-old and brother-in-law in in the second row in captain chairs, Mm -hmm. and the three other kids in the third row. Okay, we're 30 minutes into our eight-hour road trip and already hitting the Monta- uh, the mount- mountainous pass in western Montana. You're likely familiar with Snoqualmie Pass. We are, through mm-hmm. the Cascades on mm-hmm. I-90. Basically, wide curves up a hill, then down. Uh, We've driven through Montana. Yeah, this is not like that. <laughs> it has very tight curves, almost like switchbacks. Uh-oh. It didn't take long for the four-year-old to say, Mom, I'm going to vomit. As soon as we turned around to question the legitimacy of the statement, she started blowing banana chunks. We knew ah! it. My childless brother in the... Oh, yeah, I forgot the brother was there. My childless brother-in-law instantly yelled, Ugh, she's puking! And physically turned his six, seven body in the opposite direction. I was like, really, bro? Help a kid out. <laughs> nope. Five seconds later, she goes for round two. Banana vomit all down her shirt. Her, oh! car, seat, her car seat and straps. It's so... When it gets Yes. the straps in the oh. car seat yes <laughs> oh, <sighs> with a five-point harness and all down her hair oh which happens to be about as long as her waist yay <laughs> <laughs> you just cut it off right there don't miss little kid <laughs> puking in car days we couldn't even pull over right away because there wasn't a big enough shoulder on the pass we had to no. drive for a while to find a turn off thank the good lord we were on a we were on a trip and had a week's worth of clothes in the suitcase we were able to change her banana slash vomit clothes remove her car seat uh, cover and put them into a garbage bag uh, that we also happened to have packed we had that was smart with the, the garbage bag there we had mm-hmm. also had some baby wipes for dry erase activity books again thank god since she's potty trained we typically don't have diaper wipes I use about 50 wipes to clean her up, wipe off the inside of the car and her car seat. We use the water bottles we packed for our trip and some travel shampoo to wash her hair on the side of the road. Travel I, shampoo? Yeah. Wow. As semis whizzed by, you would be so Never stressed. Never thought about that. I went through like seven outfits once, getting Gloria oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. the coast. We put um, a sweatshirt on her car seat uh, so she wouldn't be on the hard plastic for eight hours. Needless to say, the trip- This of the, is your fourth child. The rest of the trip was smooth sailing, but the thought of a road trip instantly brings back the smell of bananas and not in an appetizing way. <sighs> Thanks for the last, Dustin and Mel. Jessica. Wow. Post Falls, Idaho. Mm. Gloria did throw up a banana once. When? And she was in the back of like a four-door sedan. We were going to LA or something. She was like five. Because she gets a little car sick. Right. It just like Claire and you and- but she was like, she didn't eat bananas for like a year or two. 
Because she was like, it was the banana that made me sick. Right, which is unfortunate because bananas are what you're supposed to have when you are sick. But I, yeah, I think um, with little kids, like being higher up helps them. And in sedans, if you're lower and you can't see out, Mm -hmm. I think that had to have something to do with it. Because she wouldn't throw up just driving on the freeway in our car. I just remember this is the most dad thing. And maybe this is just a me thing. I would be just so mad we had to stop. (laughs) (laughs) I think by your third kid, you can catch puke in a bag. Yeah, you can kind (laughs) of. I know it because I've caught it. (laughs) You hear the noise, the gurgle, and you turn around (laughs) with your grocery store (laughs) plastic bags and just catch it. (laughs) Got it. No, stop. Throw it out the window. We do not throw barf bags out the window. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is a comedy (laughs) podcast. Don't deconstruct. I'm just impressed about the shampoo. Don't deconstruct the bits. I thought about that. The shampoo is smart. It was very, very smart. But we just we just straight up wouldn't bathe them, so we don't sweat it. <laughs> Next one. This is uh this is from Anna, and the subject is Griswold Family Christmas Tree Horror. Right. Hi Nickersons. My apologies in advance, uh, if you or any of your listeners are squeamish regarding bugs. Huh. I've heard this. I've heard about this. I'm excited. You haven't know the story. You've just heard. I okay. I know the premise. You here. have an idea where this may be yep. going. Mm-hmm. So you may know the classic National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation movie. Of course, my family always joked that we were obtaining more and more stories and fortunate similar to those depicted in the slapstick. And I have two short Christmas tree horrors to delight with you. For reference, we the Prebies pronounced Preby, yeah, are diehard real tree fans. Nonetheless, this year is our first fake tree, as we've given up all hope. The first story <laughs> is honestly our own selfishness of wanting a big, beautiful tree. We live in. Spokane and drive about an hour into the mountains every year to get a tree. I really love the opening scene where they're singing in it. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids in the back. Rusty is so funny in that movie. He is so funny. The son, hey, Russ. He crushes every yeah. line. Okay, Dad. Yeah. yeah. And when he catches him like uh, oogling over the girl at the store, yeah. the way that he mm-hmm. handles that, and he's like, hey, Russ, you can't even see the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the panty line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, when you're in the mountains, you can't really gauge the size of a tree since there's snow and it is relative to all the other <laughs> massive trees. That's how we came home with a 12 by 12 foot tree. <laughs> what? Scraped off the siding and trimmed around our door and couldn't cut the ropes lest we break the windows. <laughs> We, we literally brought a saw into our living room and cut the tree into very small pieces and carried it back outside. What? So they bring the tree in, yeah, yeah, realize I get it it's now. too big, cut it back down to bring it back outside, and then we hit a tree farm for a more reasonable purchase. <laughs> We d- when we didn't learn our lesson, this past 2020 Christmas, we brought a nice tree, bought a nice tree, and had it fully decorated for about a week. One day, my sister noticed what looked like thousands of tiny beads on the floor. They were alive. They were giant <laughs> uh, aphids, aphids, how do you aphids. say that? Aphids, yeah. we later learned. And there were multiple nests embedded in the trunk of the tree. No. We scrambled to save the ornaments and presents, but they had crawled under the wrapping paper. <gasps> And we had to rewrap most preference presents oh, no. and anxiously hope friends and family didn't uh, have bugs in their gifts on Christmas. <laughs> uh, we hauled the entire thing outside, all of us covered with the aphids, aphids, am I saying that? Aphids, sorry. Crawling on our arms <gasps> and necks, going underneath gloves we had used for protection. No, we went without a no. tree that year and 2021 is our first fake tree year. I still get shivers thinking about it. I have text, uh, attached pictures uh, for your enjoyment there. The- that is hysterical thank Mm -hmm. you oh my gosh anna for the email oh my gosh that is so so funny (sighs) all right two more this one right here is from thomas and the subject is uh hhr with divorced mil I think you meant it HHS, but it doesn't matter. Holiday Horse Story. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. This is from Thomas okay. in Fernandina Beach, Florida. All right. Dustin and Melissa, my wife, three boys, and I drove 13 hours from Florida to D.C., where my parents and my wife's divorce divorcee mom conveniently live 40 minutes apart. 
The intended plan was to spend a total of 15 day- days in D.C. for our Christmas vacation. Whew. Sounds normal. Sounds great, especially in a glitzed up D.C. Then, oh, the horror. With great bemoaning and complaining, my mother-in-law found out that we have the audacity to stay with my parents for five of the 15 days. Essentially, it boiled down to 66.6666667 percent of our time would we be with the mother-in-law and 44 of the percent with my parents. The gumption that we dared to spend any time with my parents sent my mother-in-law in a tirade. Oh, my- no. My wife was so pissed she flipped the switch and we ended up staying with my parents for the whole 15 days and my wife refused to see her own mom. (laughs) (laughs) We don't allow manipulation. It seems to bubble over during Christmas. I do love my mother-in-law, but her manipulative behavior drives my wife and I insane. Love the pod. Though you do need to come to Florida sometime to experience freedom. (laughs) That's funny, Thomas. (laughs) That does make me feel better about... (laughs) Extended family problems. <laughs> All right. This mm-hmm. one's from Melissa, and the subject is holiday humor slash horror stories. Hi, Dustin and Melissa. I've been racking my brain since the challenge uh, brain since the challenge went out for holiday horror stories to try and think back to all the Christmases to try to remember one. Most of our horror stories came from 4th of July fireworks being thrown in the fire, flaming marshmallows in the air, and burning down an entire wood pile. <sighs> I remember one year for New Year's Eve, which probably barely counts, but it's pretty funny. Two days after Christmas, when my dad had a massive stroke. Not the funny part, but necessary for the rest of the story. We decided to spend the night in the ICU, waiting on a room on New Year's Eve in case we needed to rush back to the hospital, which was over an hour from home. There were no TVs or magazines or anything in the waiting room, so it was exceedingly boring and made for long days. Earlier on on the New Year's, uh, we went to the cafeteria before getting PJs on to get our dinner. My sister hadn't eaten hers yet, so she didn't realize she needed mayo for her very bland hospital sandwich. She was trying to convince... Wait, where's this going? I have no idea where the story was going. She was trying to convince to go <laughs> with her through the hospital back... She was trying to convince me, I think you're trying to say, to go back with her through the hospital back to the cafeteria just for some mayo. She told me she'd trade me the unstained chair for the one with what looked like a bleached out vomit spot on it (laughs) so that I would uh, have it to use for the night of sleep. I finally relented and went with her to the cafeteria for mayonnaise. But by the time we made it there, it was 12.03 a.m. and they had closed at midnight. So she had to eat a very dry hospital sandwich and I had to use the vomit stained chair to try and sleep. (laughs) I think you're supposed to get the non-vomit chair. I think so, too. Because you went to the cafeteria. It was pretty funny at the time, probably for being sleep deprived, but dry, cold meat sandwiches are pretty horrific. I agree with that. Can't wait for the upcoming Indiana tour dates and hope the Nickerson family has a great Christmas season. What were you going to say? Sounds like what? It sounded like they were going to wear pajamas for dinner. I also, I I was, it was a hard one to go. I was like, are we going to do pajamas for dinner? Or I wasn't (laughs) sure. I was like, is something, is is this going to be something like a mayo incident? Incident. Really, what it was is you fought and you were so indecisive that nobody got what you they missed wanted. New Year's and mayonnaise. Yeah, which you know what, mayonnaise is a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> so I'm sorry that that didn't work out for you guys. <laughs> guys, we appreciate you listening so much to the pod. Whatever you are celebrating, we hope mm-hmm. that you enjoy celebrating it. Happy holidays to you, everybody. Merry Christmas, uh, all of the above. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much. All right, thanks. Bye. 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 Hey, folks, want to give a special shout out to our as essential as oils patrons. Ooh, that's $25 up a month. That's a big money right there. What you get is you get a special shout out on this podcast at the end right now. So first up, April Griffiths, Adam Bush, Allison Nelson, Bonnie Galindo, Carrie Teague, Caroline Crimmins, Code to Grow, Courtney Eibling, Damaris Diaz Stevens, Dan and Chelsea Morell, Daniel Owens, David and Melissa Cox. Dave Hoagland. Isaac Teron. Jason White. Jennifer Ashley Downs. Jessica Handerand. Joshua and Nikki Platt. Jordan Lara. Jordan Cowan. Juliana Smith. Lori Amos. Matt and Sam Slosdom. Nathan and Jennifer Merritt. Nicole Carose. Rachel Wilson. Rachel Kennedy. Robert and Nellie Capen. Steven Menya. And Tiffany Payne. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank bam, you. Bam, 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 b